Well, hello and welcome to the Midweek Minute. And we continue in our series that we've titled Being Jesus Strong. And certainly we need the strength of Jesus Christ in our lives today uh, on every imaginable front and every imaginable form of things that we're involved in today in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of uh, political unrest, in the midst of uh, so much division and uh, destructive movements in our nation today. We need to be Jesus strong. And one of the ways we can be Jesus strong is to know the mind of Jesus, to know the truth of God's word. And we've chronicled that over the last couple of weeks. And I invite you to go back and review how that God's word is the ultimate truth for our life. It is the revelation of God's truth who he is and everything about him in life revealed to us. And of course, the counter to that from the secular world is science or scientism. I'm not anti-science, but when we see a movement taking place today to replace the answer and the authority being in the scriptures of God's word with man's science or man's attempt to explain and answer and be the final authority of all things. In fact, scientism is defined as the promotion of science as the best or only objective means by which society should determine normative and epistemological values and truths. And of course, we chronicled last week also that the Bible is not basically a science book, but it is scientifically accurate. In fact, in that same little helpful book that I read from last week, uh, that manuscript from Outer Space by H.L. Wilmington, he says here are the 12 scientific principles, 12 that he used to accurately describe in the Bible, that were some, uh, some of them were centuries before man discovered them. Not only does the Word of God include that which is scientifically correct, but it also totally avoids the scientific nonsense that is found in many other ancient religious writings. And we could share several of those with you, but I, it was interesting that in the uh, library in Paris, there are three and a half miles of obsolete science books. In 1861, the French Academy of Science published a brochure of 51 scientific facts which supposedly contradicted the Bible. These were used by the atheists of that day in ridiculing Christians. Today, all 51 of those facts are unacceptable to modern scientists. Surely the devout Christian can utter a hearty amen with Dr. James Dwight Dana of Yale University, probably the most eminent geologist in American history, who will once address the graduating class with these words. Young men, as you go in, out into the world to face scientific problems. Remember that I, an old man, who has known only science all of his life long, say to you that there is nothing truer in all the universe than the scientific statements contained in the Word of God. Now, we could go on and on. In fact, I'm working on a series that uh, I'll probably bring in the new year to continue on with that thought. But back to being Jesus strong. Uh, so much confusion out there today, uh, so much conflicting information uh, that deal with a number of different issues, such as a pandemic or what have you. Who do you believe? What do you believe? Uh, what is the proper protocol to follow? And uh, as in no other time in history, it seems that we need a fresh rebirth of discernment in our lives, particularly as believers. How to, and, and discernment is simply the ability to differentiate between truth and error. And uh, with, with so much media coming from such a one-sided, blind-siding of truth uh, that doesn't fit their agenda, agenda and narrative, uh, we hear of spins, of fake news, media bias, what have you. We need to know how to differentiate truth from error. We need discernment. Where do we get discernment from as a child of God? 
uh, the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 5.11, we pick up and the story says that we have much to say to you and, and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. And I think that's what's happened. Uh, much of Christianity, the churches today, we, we become dull of hearing. And, and when we go back to the gospels, we find out that Jesus always, and hear this, equated hearing the word of God with application of the word of God and activation of God's word in and through our lives. You remember the, uh, the famous uh, story that he told of the wise man who built his house upon the rock versus the sand? Well, the way he described what happened there is the guy who built his house on the sand that was destroyed when the storms of life came is they heard the word of God, but they didn't apply it. The one who built his life on the rock, who, when he heard the word of God, applied it into his life and, and moved from there. So understand that it's more than hearing the word of God. And it says, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. But get this, verse 14, Hebrews 5, solid food belongs to those who are of full age or mature. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So he's saying there, it's by use of the word of God. It's not a casual relationship to God's word. It, it's a committed, consistent intake of God's word, the study of God's word, the, uh, the building up of the word of God in our hearts and minds and souls. And by, uh, by this, we have our senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I thought of that uh, uh, ESP, extrasensory perception. And uh, I would say it comes to the believer by extra scriptural perception. So we need to be in God's word. You're listening to this broadcast, I hope with the idea of not only learning something, but living out what you learn. And uh, so this is the admonition from the writer of Hebrews. And we close with uh, John chapter 17, because uh, the real prayer of Jesus, uh, the Lord's prayer, uh, he gave a model prayer to the disciples at the request earlier on, our Father who art in heaven. But here's the real Lord's prayer. This is the one Jesus prayed for you and I, uh, for his disciples then, his disciples today. As we live out the truth in a culture of deception. And what does he say here in he, uh, John chapter 17 and verse 14? He's praying to the Father and he says, I have given them, that's you and I, your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Listen, uh, a secularized world uh, does not really respect or respond to the authority of God's word. In fact, they hate it. And we see a great movement in our land today to eliminate the authority of God's word from uh, our lives. We, we still have a right to pigeonhole it in a church service on a, on a certain day of the week, but don't take it out and expect the world to respond and respect uh, that which we declare is the truth. We still do it, but understand that's the average response from the world. He says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Then he says in verse 17, sanctify them, set us apart, fortify us by your truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe, that's you and I, uh, through in me through their word. So listen, as I close right now, I challenge you again, and it, it maybe sounds redundant to you, 
as I do it. But are you in God's word? And the only way to wade through the confusion, the conflict that is inundating our lives today and affecting us so negatively as believers, we've got to be in the truth of God's word. So make a commitment to get into God's word. His word is truth. Believe it and live it. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week.